What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is a uh, Love and Marriage Huntsville, uh, season three, episode what five, four. We're on episode four. So we pick up where we left off last week with Tiffany at the brunch for Destiny's birthday, basically reminding Destiny that Lederick had taken some other woman to his businessman of the year award. I don't know. And Tiffany act like she don't understand why Destiny got a problem with it. And my thing is this. Even if you did not know or understand the gravity of what you were saying, once you found out that they were actually going through a divorce or had gone through a divorce, like, could you not understand, like, maybe that had something to do with it? And Melody, girl, you talking about something. It don't matter. It don't matter. It's over now. Girl, please, you know that that doesn't end overnight. Hell, you still get mad when Martel put the wrong thing on Instagram that you don't like. Like, it, it doesn't matter just because their marriage didn't last long. Like Destiny said, it still hurts. I still have feelings. Yes, we've moved on. It's over. It was for the best. But that doesn't change the fact that I love this man. At some point, I loved him enough to want to marry him, relocate, have a baby by him. And Destiny, y'all know Destiny ain't always been my favorite person. But in this moment, I was like, damn, like... I feel for her and for Melody to be, I feel like Melody was being very oblivious to the situation. Like she didn't understand why Destiny would be upset. Um, when Destiny came back to the table, I mean, Tiffany got up, you know, to go to the bathroom and Destiny's talking about something. You like Tiffany? Like she didn't see that whole situation that had transpired. Anyway, um, then we have Marceau arrives in um, Houston and Letitia meets him at the door in lingerie with a drink in her hand. Listen, in that time, at that moment, Marceau, what you were supposed to do was turn around to the camera crew and say, we'll call y'all back in about an hour, hour and a half, okay? I got some business to tend to, okay? Marceau comes in. He lets Letitia sit there in her whole lingerie. She sits in his lap, and she's trying to be so seductive and sexual. And he starts talking about business meetings, and we got to order this amount of bottles of wine, and we got to do this, and we got to do that. And Letitia was like, you are killing the mood. He was like, but we're here for meetings. Like, this is a business trip. Yes, it's a business trip, but you can take out an hour and a half to two hours for your wife. She done opened up the door in the lingerie. Everything else was supposed to go out the door. The fact that it didn't, Letitia, girl, you in trouble. Y'all got some issues, and I think your issues might be bigger than what we all have felt like they were. Anyway, um, then we have Kimmy talking to Maurice about what she learned down to the brunch. And she talks to Maurice about the whole vaping situation. And Maurice was like, yeah, I knew about it. Like, I knew about it. And I have a problem with the fact that they would bring that, that Tiffany would bring that up in front of other people. And I feel like in other people, he meant in front of the cameras, right? He said, now that's going to put up, that's going to put something out there about my son. Like, now that's going to make him look like he's some sort of deviant or he's a bad kid or something. And he was like... Monster has never been a bad kid. He's never gotten in trouble in school. His grades ain't been the best. But as far as him getting in trouble, and now that's the narrative that's going to be out there. But see, Maurice, here's part of the problem. You not telling Kimmy did not give her the ammunition she needed in that moment. So when Tiffany came for her, or came at her with this whole, yeah, Monster was vaping in the bathroom. If Kimmy had known what happened, knew the circumstances, knew the details surrounding what happened, then she would have been able, she would have been properly... Um, and, you know, had the proper ammunition to come back at Tiffany and address it and could have nipped it in the bud. But because she didn't know the situation, and I respect the fact that Kimmy was like, well, I ain't about to be out here saying it didn't happen because, hell, I don't know what happened and what didn't happen. She couldn't say anything. And so it just sat there. That's on you, Maurice. That's on you. You want Kimmy to co-parent, but you don't want to respect Kimmy enough to understand that she needs to cope, to give her the information she needs. If Monster was her natural born son, would you feel like she needed to know? Then if the answer, in your mind, if the answer is yes, then she still needed to know because that is her, that is his bonus mom. And I promise you that she wouldn't have kept something like that away from you about Jalen if Jalen were in, you know, middle school and that had happened. I ain't talking about him as an adult. Um... So then she says, well, look, that's why you need to be spending time with Monster. You need to be doing all this, that, and the other with Monster. And he was like, well, me and Monster talked about it. I mean, we had a conversation about it. She was like, yeah, but, you know, you're not doing a good job of dividing up your time between your family and your job. 
And now I hear Maurice making excuses. I hear Maurice talking about, well, I got to do this with my business and I got to do that with my business and I got to build my business and business, 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 business. And what Kimmy is trying to get, trying to get you to understand is that's great. That's well, that's fine. But at the end of the day, you have, your business can't be more important than your family. And I'm letting you know that you're slipping a little bit. I'm letting you know that you're slipping a little bit. Um, I don't think Maurice was trying to hear it. I don't think he was accepting it. Then they were talking about the meeting with um, Kiowa. And he said that, you know, even with Kiowa, he takes suggestions from her, but she doesn't have the final word because he has the final word. And again, I feel like when the situation was reversed, when, when Monster was living with her full time and you were the out-of-state daddy, I wonder if that was her attitude. I wonder if that's how she treated you. I wonder if you would have been okay with that. Like, again, you're the dad and I get it, but you are not the end-all be-all. This this should definitely be, dis you know, decisions by group. I don't know how to word that. But anyway, again... I don't think that was right that you didn't tell Kimmy about that situation and let Kimmy know what was going on. I think that was real messed up on your part. So back down to the Houston, honey. We see Marceau and Letitia meet with their uncle who's building the house for them. And we find out that the reason why this house situation keep getting pushed back is because, hell, both of them keep changing the plans. Now, Letitia wants this big-ass closet. I sound like she's having a two-story closet a la Toya Bush Harris down to the uh, Married to Medicine, okay? Letitia, do you even have the ammunition for a two-story closet? I'm just saying. Marceau wants a bigger garage, and so you know, like everybody. So it's in you know the the um their their um uncle told them like, listen, Marceau trying to put this all off on you know, Letitia, like, it's her fault, and he was like, no, 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 this both of y'all, and actually, it's coming more from your side of the table than it's coming from her side of the table, I'm getting more, you know, specs and changes and, and things from you than I'm getting from her, but he neither here nor there, I guess one day, child, the thing will be built, I don't know, um, then they had their, their party down for the, you know, for the black, uh, champ chocolate champagne, they had that with um, uh, nephew Tommy and the cast of Ready to the Ready to Love. Now listen, they built this whole scene up as if Kyra was doing something inappropriate to Marceau. I don't feel like Kyra did now. You know, y'all know Kyra. Go back to my reviews. You know, Kyra won my favorite person on the show. But I don't feel like Kyra did nothing inappropriate. She was, you know, Marceau was mixing and, mixing and mingling. She was mixing and mingling. If you saw the show, the dress that she had on was about what she wore on the show like that's how she dresses you know i don't feel like she was throwing her breast in his face or doing anything definitely i don't feel like she was being inappropriate and inappropriate in that moment um but Letitia felt some kind of way and she pulled him away and took him outside and told him that he ain't like the way that old girl was pushing up on him and she had to pull him away and she even started crying Letitia, girl listen If you're going to get jealous about a situation where he is literally standing in front of you, 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 y'all need to, y'all, y'all need some help. And I think y'all do end up going to a therapist this week. I think you need it because that is ridiculous to me. And again, I ain't here to judge you, girl. I ain't here to judge you, but that, that's a bit much, ma'am. That's a bit much. Um... All right, last but not least, we have Maurice and Kimmy meeting up with Kawa and her husband down to the restaurant. Maurice starts talking about this meeting he has to get to and how he can't wait. And Kawa, I guess they running late. And Kimmy was like, say what? Say who? Like, first of all, you called this damn meeting. Second of all, well, no, Kyle will call the meeting. I'm sorry. But you were just talking about how important it was and how great you thought it was that we, you know, that we were all for sitting down to meet. And now you getting ready to leave and you want to leave me here as your proxy. First of all, you know, Kimmy and Kyle don't even get along like that. How are you just going to leave them by themselves down to the, the restaurant to talk about what? Because 
she can't have an educated conversation about monster because hell you don't tell her nothing you don't halfway tell her nothing about what's going on with monster so how is she supposed to have a conversation with kawa about what's going on with monster because she don't know kawa you said you tell her what you feel like she need to know so she ain't got no serious conversation and what the hell are we gonna be left talking about maurice you sat there and left them alone now what are we gonna talk about the whole purpose of the meeting is 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 a mute point. Now you said you had a meeting with the lawyers and you couldn't change it and yada 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 yada. Yad. Then you should you need to do a better job of spacing your damn meetings out. That was so oh my gosh, I felt so bad for Kimmy. Not that Kimmy can't handle it, because y'all know Kimmy can handle it. But why would you put her in that situation? So anyway, we ain't even seen how the meeting go down. So I guess we'll have to wait this week to see how the meeting go down. Sorry that this re review is late. For some reason my DVR didn't pick up the um the episode and then when i tried to watch it on demand it wouldn't come through and i had to wait a couple of days so i don't know what the problem was but hopefully tonight's episode comes through fine and we'll be back on track anyway i'll talk to y'all later peace